Hello, this is Mark from I Am Organic Gardening, located in Zone 6B in the lovely state of New Jersey. And then we're looking at my backyard kitchen garden. And today we're going to be going over mulching using leaves, wood chips, etc. versus cover cropping using seeds. So the first thing I want to share with you, anytime you use any type of organic material like leaves, wood chips, especially hay and straw, you run the risk of contamination of that material to put on top of your soil. Now, it's more prevalent, not so much in leaves and wood chips, but in, in hay and straw, there's a lot of YouTube videos out there showing that when they apply this to as, as a cover of mulch, that they have problems the following spring, or even that spring when they applied it, that there is weed killer still in there that's going to harm their plants. And you run a much lower risk using cover crop seeds. So one nice thing about having leaves or wood chips available to us is that it's no cost to us whatsoever. But comparing to using a cover crop or seeds for the cover crop, we most likely have to buy them all the time. So why do we want to use a mulch or cover crops in our garden, especially over the winter? Well, during the summertime, the mulch is great because we can regulate our soil temperature and also our moisture in our soil and also weed pressure, which is great. Now, when it comes to the off-season part, when our plants are done, we actually want to conserve our topsoil. And also, too, we want to establish a living root in the ground to help grow and build soil. Now, that's another thing with mulch. Mulch is great and it will uh, attract worms and the worms will eat the mulch and bring it down into the soil to some extent. But they don't really build soil because only through mycorrhizal fungi, which needs that living root in the ground, like what you see here, and this is comfrey, that that is a permanent living root in the ground. Only through that living root in the ground that we can establish mycorrhizal fungi to grow in the winter time. And that's very important because mycorrhizal fungi is the ability to build and grow soil. If you just have leaf mold on top of the soil like so, or wood chips, you cannot really build soil because you have to have a living root in the ground for it to work, for that mycorrhizal fungi to work and actually make bigger pores in the soil. Yes. By just adding leaves or wood chips in the ground, you're going to loosen that soil up. Worms are going to be attracted, but they're not going to do a, uh, they're going to do a good job, but, but they're going to do a much better job having a living root in the ground. That's why we also use cover crops, because cover crops establish that living root in the ground. Even if there's snow on top or else too, that root is still alive because it can survive the winter. And what it does is help grow mycorrhizal fungi, like I mentioned before, in the ground. You have to have that living root as a host to grow endo and ectomycorrhizal in the ground. So now with a living root in the ground, the advantage of having that, or also with cover crops, with the seeds that we're going to be using to establish a living root in the ground, it's going to be taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere through the plant and pushing it back down in the ground. It has done this from day one on this planet and is doing an amazing job. That carbon that is being put in the ground is a storage unit. It's almost like a big battery that these plants can pull from and regulate the nutrients that it needs and exchange that with other, let's say, bacteria and fungi in the ground. And it will send out signals in its roots to do a much better job making that plant healthy. Now again, leaves or mulch will do the same thing but this just does it better. Again, the plant is not covered with leaves and mulch and wood chips because it has to disintegrate all that because it doesn't want to build it up. And basically when the bacteria and everything else starts eating all that leaves and fungi, eating all the leaves and wood chips on the ground, it's just going back in the atmosphere, turning back into carbon dioxide after they consume it. So I've moved over to the bed that's in front of the one I was just speaking about where the comfrey's in. Now, earlier this year I did a video on planting up, let's say, clover to establish a root system in the ground so I can eventually plant my tomato plants in there with the clover. And this is what has happened. Now it's been dry and the clover has died out on the below here. But that clover established a mycorrhizal food system that can connect to my plants and do an amazing job. 
Now, you can see that they're nice green. I've used no fertilizer, no compost. I just established a living root in the system that will take the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and do an amazing job feeding that soil. Thus, when I plant another plant in here, like a tomato plant, I don't have to do anything, and it builds a healthy root system in the plant, and everything is working out, out okay. Now, right here, I can see... I haven't picked it yet or something like that. Now... Where is it? I think it's there. It should be there. Now, there's a tomato in there that's quite large, and I'm going to pick that and I'm going to show that to you. Now, here's that tomato you can see. It's got a couple cracks on the top there, but you can see it probably weighs at least a pound. Nice healthy tomato, and you can compare it to my hand here. Nice and large, healthy, and again, no fertilizer or compost or nothing else too. Just using mulching methods and keeping a living root in the ground as much as possible. It's a fantastic tomato. I'm going to cut it up and have a tomato sandwich tonight, but it looks delicious, and everything else is doing very well out here also too. So let's see what our October tomato looks like. Hopefully, nice. Oh, it's gonna be a good sandwich. Very nice. You can see here it's about five inches across, give or take. And nice sized tomato. Delicious on a sandwich. Now, this section of tomatoes is a yellow pear. You can see them all on there. There's probably at least 50 of them. I gotta come out and pick them all. But again, all grown with just a living root in the ground, established living in the ground over winter, and then put the clover in, and it's all just fine and delicious. And we have a nice bunch of yellow pears on the plant here. I have to go get a box and pick all these up because there's just so many. And it's just doing a nice, perfect job of being nice and healthy and again, not trying to make compost or adding compost every year and just keeping living root in the ground, like I said before, in the other tomato plant. And you can see how nice and healthy they're doing here. Now that plant has probably snapped off from the, the weight, but you can see the next yellow pear plant here, right next to it, is just amazingly well also too. Nice and healthy, even after the season. And here, you can also see, I wanna show you something, when it comes to blight or any other problems that come from the soil, you can see how close those tomato leaves are to the ground and everything is fine. I do not cut back tomato leaves or anything else either and they grow in a perfect harmony with the soil. As long as your soil is healthy, your plant is healthy. So the best combination I've learned out there is to have a living root in the ground and plus mulch around it. You get the best of both worlds. But if you don't have mulch or leaves or wood chips, you gotta establish a living root of a cover crop over winter because you cannot have that soil bare. Because think about it, most people are done in my area zone 6B, let's say by the end of October. So you got the month of November, December, January, February, March, April, May. That's seven months that you have no living root in the ground if you don't put a cover crop in there. So, and that's gonna establish just a nice healthy soil for you to begin with in the future. I wanna thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know because I go make another video or include it in a future video. I don't know if it'll be the next one or not, but we're gonna be planting up winter rye. Now, I know a lot of people have had uh, problems trying to terminate in the future, but I'm coming up with a couple different methods that you can improve that in your garden. So, hopefully you will see them and stay with this channel, and I appreciate it. And just here that these other tomatoes on the vine, hopefully they will ripen up. If not, I'll have to bring them inside. But you can see that they're doing very nicely. And nice and big also, that one and the one down here, just beautiful. Now again, no fertilizer, just using a cover crop and letting the, uh, my parent material in the soil, my sand, silt, and clay be eaten by the microbes and deliver that nutrient-dense uh, 
product right to the plant and this is exactly what it's doing and you can see how nice and green it is I don't ever add nitrogen to my soil nor grow uh, clover to enhance it by any means I just do it the clover to actually establish a living root so I can plant it up in the springtime thank you very much and I will see you again shortly enjoy your weekend bye